building lasting relationships. KHNL News 8 and K5 News, now in high definition. Now, in high definition. Live, local, late breaking. KHNL News 8 at 10. Hurricane Felicia is growing in size and strength, but are the Hawaiian Islands in danger as the storm travels west? Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Felicia has now intensified to a Category 4 hurricane, but by the time it reaches our islands, it may be much weaker. Meteorologist Paul Drews has tonight's update. Throughout our day today, Hurricane Felicia has continued to intensify, and right now a very powerful Category 4 storm. This storm, about 1,500 miles to the east-southeast of the state, not alone out there in the East Pacific. Just behind it is Tropical Storm Enrique, although Enrique is expected to weaken over the next 24 to 48 hours. Felicia also expected to gradually weaken, but right now has sustained winds of 140 miles an hour, a very powerful system. It is expected to make a turn to the west-northwest and then gradually more turn to the west as it gets closer to the islands, but at the same time weakening, so expected to be a tropical storm just to the northeast of the islands after the weekend. The reason why we are expecting it to weaken right now, it is over very warm waters in the eastern Atlantic rather eastern Pacific, I should say, but as it makes its turn to the northwest, it's going to be running over some cooler waters. It needs waters about 80 degrees or warmer to help fuel the system, but it'll start running over cooler waters as it gets closer to the islands, and that is going to help this system to weaken. We will have more on Felicia. We'll keep tracking this system, and you can too, just by heading to our website, khnl.com, and clicking on our hurricane tracker. There you can follow the track of the storm as well as the forecast path of that system, giving you updates on intensity and speed as this system gets closer to the islands. Also on our hurricane tracker page, you can also check out tips so you're prepared for the storm. And we will have more on Felicia as well as your island weather coming up just a little bit later in the show. All right, thanks, Paul. And Governor Linda Lingle says she and her cabinet are receiving daily updates on the progress of the storm and says, quote, at this time, there is no cause for alarm, but it is important for residents and businesses to remain vigilant and to monitor the path of these storm systems while taking steps to prepare. And as Felicia nears our islands, Air Force planes prepare to meet the hurricane head on. Zahid Arup has the story new tonight at 10. The Air Force is sending as many as four C-130 aircraft to the Pacific from Mississippi. And as Felicia grows in strength, they'll fly into the storm to see what we have in store. The C-130 aircraft is one high-tech hurricane tracker. Wind speed, temperature, humidity, and pressure information are its targets as it flies directly into the eye of the storm. The bat data is intended to make our track forecast more accurate and past uh, hurricanes show us that that data does make a difference. It's kind of like running a football. You're going to get hit. You just don't want to get hit too hard. Navigator John Fox describes what it was like to fly into 2007's Hurricane Fossey with technology called SMURF or Step Frequency Microwave Meter for all you scientific types. It allows pilots to see through clouds and get a more accurate sea surface temperature. The more heat down there, the more energy. And it, and it literally feeds the storm. Felicia's going to take a turn to the west at some point. But exactly where and how far south, forecasters don't know yet. The information from the C-130s will be sent to the National Hurricane Center in Miami and also determines if our islands will be hit and how hard. Still too uncertain whether or not we're going to get direct impacts and how strong fleece will be when it gets near us. With potentially serious weather headed our way, these hunters will target and tell us about Hurricane Felicia's threat. A NOAA G4 jet will also be used to drop instruments on parachutes down to get other measurements of the storm. Now, the aircraft should arrive on Friday and possibly head out towards the hurricane on Saturday. Zahid Arab, KHNL and K5 News. Thanks, Zahid. And make sure you stay with KHNL and K5 News for the latest developments on Felicia and Enrique. And as Paul said, you can also head to our website, KHNL.com, for updates 24-7. New tonight at 10, a federal grand jury indicts a Kauai man for the killing of a Hawaiian monk seal. Charles Vendina is accused of violating the Endangered Species Act. The monk seal was found shot to death at Pila'a Beach on Kauai's north shore back in May. The female seal in her teens was pregnant with her sixth pup.
Now, if convicted, Vadina faces a maximum penalty of one year in prison and a fine of $50,000. Also from the Garden Isle, a rancher clearing his land in Kilohana Crater uncovered something unexpected, a live military artillery shell. It's about 20 inches long, and military officials say it was probably used for training missions during World War II. Members from Schofield's Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit flew to Kauai to detonate the device. They later determined the area was safe. And tonight we have new disturbing details in the case of an Oahu man suspected of using violence to coerce women into prostitution. This morning, prosecutors obtained a seven count grand jury indictment against Charles Coughlin. The 28 year old is accused of forcing a woman to work as a prostitute in Waikiki. Investigators say he beat her and broke her jaw. A second woman told police Coughlin also tried to recruit her and threatened her on numerous occasions. The suspect repeatedly called and text messaged victim number two that he would cut her up, kill her, blow up her car, and kidnap her. Obviously, the suspect poses an extreme danger to both of these victims. The grand jury indicted Coughlin on promoting prostitution, terroristic threatening, assault, and other charges. A judge confirmed his bail at $250,000. A grand jury on Oahu also found enough evidence to send a man suspected of a deadly shooting in the Ala Moana area to trial. The panel indicted Philip DeLeon on eight counts, including murder, attempted murder, reckless endangering and firearms offenses. Investigators say he shot and killed 35-year-old Sean Powell outside a bar on Rycroft Street last Friday. DeLeon is also accused of firing a shot towards a witness. The 33-year-old remains in custody, unable to post $2 million bail. A Nui Nui school in Pololo Valley had the most swine flu cases of any school statewide back in the spring. Well, now that regular flu season is just around the corner, is a Nui Nui prepared? Leland Kim has some answers. Students at Anui Nui School enjoy recess during their first full week back in school. They're ready to tackle another academic year. It's good. We started senior year, so it's really fun. The mood on campus is much more upbeat than it was in the spring when it had 11 swine flu cases, the most of any school in the state. I think because it started off at Anui Nui, we've um, become really prepared in it. And that's really good for the haumana and for um, their parents to know that it is a safe place to be. The Center for Disease Control. Principal Charles Naomu has been busy staying on top of swine flu. He's improved the school's sanitation and hygiene policies and passed on new health information to parents. Since that time, as the flu has progressed, I was trying to make this school better prepared as it went around the state or around the world. Okay. One of the things the school has done is install motion-activated paper towel dispensers. This helps reduce the spread of germs by minimizing direct contact. The entire campus, including the cafeteria, was professionally sanitized over the summer. I feel safe, uh, comfortable, you know, that we're ready for whatever comes our way. <laughs> Kaimi Johnson is coming back for his senior year and after recovering from swine flu. He followed doctor's orders and recovered at home while taking Tamiflu. I'm hoping that it, it, things will just keep on getting better. And I'm thankful that we're prepared now, so we can prevent other people from getting it. Leland Kim, KHNL and K5 News. Two American journalists in prison in North Korea for nearly five months are back at home in Southern California tonight. It has been an amazing and emotional day for both of their families and a homecoming they will continue to celebrate for a long time. As Yuna Lee and Laura Ling stepped off the plane and back into freedom, they carried with them the emotions of nearly five months in captivity. The past 140 days, have been the most difficult, heart-wrenching time of our lives. Her voice quivering, Ling talked about the moment the women realized they were finally going home. We feared that at any moment we could be sent to a hard labor camp. Instead, communist officials took the American journalists to a different location. When we walked in through the doors, we saw standing before us President Bill Clinton. <laughs> we were
were shocked, but we knew instantly in our hearts that the nightmare of our lives was finally coming to an end. The former president made the trip to California, where he was greeted by his vice president, Al Gore, who founded Current TV, the network the women were working for when they were arrested. It speaks well of our country that when two American citizens are in harm's way, that so many people would just put things aside and just go to work to, to, to make sure that this has had a happy ending. President Obama shared in the joy from the White House. We are obviously extraordinarily relieved. But this day isn't about the fanfare or the politicians. It's about two families that are finally whole again. To be able to look um, into her, her eyes and at her little face today was, was absolutely indescribable. A vision they have been hoping and waiting for for almost five months. And Laura Ling took to her Facebook page tonight to express her gratitude for being back home. She thanked the public for their support and said that while she is incredibly exhausted, she feels so fortunate to be free again. Well, maybe you have never thought of the Hawaii State Capitol as a cool place. Well, tonight we have the proof that it really is. That story is coming up a little later in the newscast. Stay with us. Much more news when KHNL News 8 at 10 returns. For over 70 years, Honolulu Freight Service ships to and from all the Hawaiian islands. Dry and refrigerated cargo. Inner island shipping. On island trucking. Long term warehousing. Oversized cargo. Honolulu Freight Service, a Hawaii tradition. Dating is about meeting new people, it's someone to have fun with. Dating is about connecting with somebody new, it's about having fun. It's about passion, it's about excitement. You can meet someone new right now in your area. Just call the Acme Dating Company. It's local and it's fun. I can't wait to see you. It's about hot guys. It's about meeting the woman of your dreams. <laughs> so call now and start dating the Acme Dating Company. 808-521-6696. How's it everybody? Uncle Sam Kapu here reminding you to stay local and save local. And what better way to do that than at the Seaside Hotels on Maui and on the Big Island? For years now, the locally owned Seaside family of hotels have been a comfortable second home for Hawaii's Ohana with the Maui Seaside, Kona Seaside, and Hilo Seaside properties. With rates starting at $69, how can you go wrong? Holo holo with SeasideHotelsHawaii.com. And remember, stay local, save local. Explore shops, and you'll guarantee to find something that is there for everyone. It's Hawaii's grand experience. The great food and great stores create great memories. Make life fun at Coco Marina Shopping Center. Experience Sorable on Ke'eamoku Street. Taste the difference of award-winning, authentic Korean barbecue 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sorable Korean Restaurant. Great food any time of day. He was lonely, frustrated, and hated women because he felt rejected by them. That's the picture being painted by police of the gunman who went on a shooting rampage at a Pennsylvania gym. Mike Taibbi has a closer look at what may have pushed the man over the edge. 48-year-old George Sedini had a decent job as a law firm systems analyst in a nice house in a quiet Pittsburgh neighborhood. But he also had what police described as a building rage that exploded Tuesday night. He just had a lot of hatred in him, and he was um, hell-bent on committing this act, and there was nobody going to stop him. Gym members say Sedini walked into an aerobics class at the L.A. Fitness Center sometime around 8.15 Tuesday night, and one woman who was there told the Today Show Sedini never said a word before pulling three of his four handguns out of his duffel bag. Danny was in the room for a minute, and then a minute later the lights go out, and then seconds later, you just hear shooting, and he's going sh shooting all over the room. In all, at least 36 shots were fired by a man who, according to his own blog, was determined to do this as long ago as last September. That's when he described himself as never married and listed his date of death 
August 4, 2009, and first wrote about his exit plan. In December, he wrote he'd had no girlfriend since 1984, complaining 30 million women have rejected me. January 5, 2009, every evening I am alone. And the next day, he was supposedly ready to act, at first writing, I can do this. But then, 8.45 p.m., I chickened out. I brought the loaded guns, everything. Hell. Earlier this week, his neighbors noticed some disturbing behavior. One watched him sitting alone in front of his house. How long was he sitting there? I, I don't know. We were just taking a walk. We went past when we came back. He Not was, in the chair, on the driveway. Yeah, on the driveway, yeah. yeah. Just a strange fella. And there was a chilling blog entry Monday night. Tomorrow is the big day. Maybe soon I will see God. When he fired his last bullet at himself, he still had more than 100 rounds left. We don't know as we stand here what made him stop shooting. Thank God he did. His victims, radiologist Elizabeth Betsy Gannon, 49. 37-year-old physical therapist Jody Billingsley and 46-year-old single mom Heidi Overmeyer. She was one of the nicest people you ever wanted to meet. Uh, we're going to miss her dearly. Mike Taibbi, NBC News. Thousands of Filipinos ignored heavy rain in Manila today and paid their last respects to President Corazon Aquino. Police estimate more than 100,000 lined the streets and walked behind Aquino's coffin as her casket was driven through the city. A funeral mass was held earlier for Aquino, considered by many to be a national heroine. And coming up next on KHNL News 8 at 10, the historic state capitol is sporting a new look. All day long, workers there have been rolling, cutting, and moving. We take you inside to find out what all the activity is all about. Chiropractic Family Health Center, giving good health a helping hand. We're dedicated to helping you achieve and maintain health proactive chiropractic care helps anyone live well chiropractic family health center giving good health a helping hand one of hawaii's leading real estate companies is getting bigger and better introducing era signature homes the same friendly Kama'aina service now with the global network of ERA. Seller buy faster with lead router. ERA Signature Homes agents are automatically informed of property leads by phone, email, and mobile. So when buying or selling real estate, remember, ERA Signature Homes is always there for you. We're always there for you. When you live in Hawaii, you can enjoy the delicious taste of Mauna Loa anytime. Our flavored macadamia nuts, like honey roasted, are great for beach gatherings. And moe onion and garlic macadamias are perfect to snack on when you're watching the game with friends. Even a box of our luscious dark chocolate covered macadamia nuts can brighten up any day at the office. So be sure to take Mauna Loa with you wherever you go. Because life here in Hawaii tastes so much better with Mauna Loa. Do you have a story in you? that you just have to tell. Get your chance at the Hawaii Writers Conference this Labor Day weekend, featuring award-winning authors, screenwriters, and top agents and producers, plus a private concert by the incomparable Nora Jones. Log on to KHNL.com to write a short essay and win your VIP conference ticket, or log on to HawaiiWritersConference.com for information about the conference and Nora Jones concert. The Hawaii Writers Conference, September 4th through the 7th at the Sheraton Waikiki. The lawmakers will soon see the state capitol in a new light, a greener light, as efforts to conserve energy are going up all over the place. In this week's Earth and Sea Project report, Paul Drew shows us why these changes are quite cool. There's a cover-up taking place at the state capitol. But it's one the state hopes you find out about, because this cover-up will save money. For this building, about $14,000 a year. The cost savings at the Capitol come from reduced energy use in lawmakers' offices thanks to a polished aluminum film being put on the windows. You probably can't tell much of a difference between the amount of light these newly tinted windows let in as compared to the untinted windows. But there is a big difference in the amount of heat they filter out. It cuts 66% of the, the heat, so it's about lowering energy costs. 
This film does more than just cut out the heat. It also makes it a little safer to work in the state capitol building. It's eight mils thick. What that means is it enhances the uh, structural integrity of the glass. If the glass were to break, you know, it holds all the, the pieces together. It seems like such a simple step to save electricity and save money. And it's just one of the many ways the state is cutting cost. Already the building has switched to more efficient lighting and initiated energy conservation efforts. And the state is finding by saving electricity, they're not only doing something good for their bottom line, they're also doing something good for the environment. Oh, it definitely pays to Paul Drews, K Tunnel and K5 News. And at the current energy rates, the cost savings on electricity would pay for the project in 15 years. But if energy prices go up, it could pay for itself even sooner. And Paul will be here next with your complete weather forecast for the rest of the week, plus all you need to know about Hurricane Felicia. And later, we take a journey into the deep blue for a chance to swim with sharks. Are they really the monsters some make them out to be? Come experience Aloha. At Aloha Island Self Storage, we believe in giving back to our community. That's why we'll give your fundraising organization 10% of the rent for every customer you refer. And who doesn't need more storage space? At Aloha Island Self Storage, the very best security and surveillance will keep your belongings safe. With the best rates on Oahu and storage solutions for all your needs, why go anywhere else? For your convenience, use our move-in truck free of charge. Aloha Island Self Storage. Come experience Aloha. When you want to talk baseball, see me. When you need work on your physique, see me. You want to go to Vegas, see me. When you need someone to take care of your finances, you'll come see me. Or see me. Or see me. Or see me. Or you will see all of us. Hele mai, you belong at Hawaiian Tail Federal Credit Union. Call 832 8700 today. How important is your health to you and your family? Do you want the latest information on health and wellness? Health Connections at KHNL.com is your answer. Connect to top local specialists and learn about critical medical and health issues. Information you need from experts you can trust. Health Connections at KHNL.com. Need some zip in your life? Coming to Zippy's Restaurant starting Monday, August 10th, you could be hitting Las Vegas with KHNL News 8 today and Vacations Hawaii. Now, KHNL News 8, live local late-breaking weather with meteorologist Paul Drews. We'll have breezy weather until the weekend, and we're not expecting Hurricane Felicia to impact our weather until after the weekend. For today, wind gust over 30 miles an hour, even some spots around the state seeing gust over 35 miles an hour. But what we haven't seen are a lot of cloud cover across the island chain. We have seen for the windward side of the big island some clouds. And upstream of the islands, there are some more of those scattered clouds that will be coming our way. But overall, we did see a lot of sunshine throughout our Wednesday and pretty dry conditions across the islands. Just a few light scattered showers over the past 24 hours on our Doppler radar, not picking up much moisture throughout our day today. And we aren't expecting a whole lot to come our way overnight. The atmosphere over the islands, pretty dry and stable. So as we look ahead to the rest of the night, Breezy conditions will continue. Those winds at 10 to 25 miles an hour. Some spots still seeing stronger gusts. We'll also see a few more clouds as our night goes on, along with a chance for a few light showers as well. Most of the showers for windward and mountain areas. Leeward sections should stay pretty dry both tonight and for tomorrow. But tomorrow, once again, another breezy day in the islands. Winds at 15 to 25 miles an hour plus. Parts of Maui County will once again see winds 30, even 35 miles an hour. And while we will see a lot of sunshine for those leeward areas, expect a few more clouds for those windward spots. Surf continues to be up for our eastern shores, but because of those winds, very choppy and rough surf for those eastern beaches. Three to six feet in the forecast for tomorrow, and we are expecting even bigger waves for the second half of the weekend. Sunday expected to see even bigger surf for those eastern shores. That surf generated from Hurricane Felicia. And of course, we are continuing to track Hurricane Felicia as well as Tropical Storm Enrique in the eastern Pacific. Both of those storms moving to the western direction, getting a bit closer to the islands, but Enrique expected to weaken over the next 48 hours. Meanwhile, Hurricane Felicia has sustained winds of 140 miles an hour, right now moving to the west northwest at about 12 miles an hour. And as it continues on that path, it will run over that cooler waters, 
cooler water, causing it to weaken. And once again, after the weekend, Monday morning, it is expected to be just to the north of the islands as a tropical storm. So as we look over the next few days, here's what's going to be happening with our island weather. Breezy conditions for our Thursday into our Friday, but you can still see a lot of sunshine all the way through the weekend. Those winds back down to more normal levels of 10 to 20 miles an hour for Saturday and Sunday. But after Monday, we're expecting not only an increase in clouds, but also showers and wind from Felicia. Alrighty, and next on KHNL News 8 at 10, there's no doubt about it, most of us are truly fascinated by sharks. Well, luckily, Hawaii offers many opportunities to see them up close. After the break, we're going into the cage to find out more about this mysterious ocean predator. But first, here's Conan O'Brien. Hey, everybody, we got a great show tonight with Sienna Miller, Steve Sharippa, and comedian Dion Cole. Plus, we shoot celebrity dummies out of a cannon. It's a lot of fun. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> Chiropractic Family Health Center, giving good health a helping hand. We're dedicated to helping you achieve and maintain health. Proactive chiropractic care helps anyone live well. Chiropractic Family Health Center, giving good health a helping hand. See it, touch it, try it at the As Seen on TV store, Hawaii. With the As Seen on TV store, getting ready to go out is fast and easy. Get fit quick with the latest workout videos. Prepare a quick meal with a quick chop. And with the sham wow, cleanup is a breeze. See it, touch it, try it. As Seen on TV store, Hawaii. Exclusively at Ala Moana Center and Ward Warehouse. Attention, certain fentanyl pain patches have been recalled because of a defect that can cause a fatal overdose. This is serious. If someone you know has died while wearing a skin patch for pain, the manufacturer may be to blame. I'm attorney Bob Goldwater. If you or a loved one used this patch and were injured, call me right now. You may be entitled to a large cash award. If someone you know has died while wearing a Duragesic skin patch for pain, call 800-231-6073. And welcome back everyone. Sharks have definitely been taking a bite out of the headlines this week after Monday's sighting off Oahu's North Shore. Well, tonight we explore some myths about predators. Mariella David separates fact from fiction. They're submerged in a whirlpool of myths that trigger fear over their deadly reputation. The possibility of some big shark coming along, <laughs> just kind of nervous. A kind of nervousness and curiosity that draws people here at Hawaii Shark Encounters in Haleiwa. Yeah, I thought they would come closer to the cage, but they don't try to attack or, you know, they don't try to bite the cage or anything. This is video the owner of the shark tour company shot. Stephanie Brendel is an experienced diver who swims with sharks, even tiger sharks. I would never recommend this to anybody because it would be irresponsible, but tiger sharks are really quite slow and mellow. At least in clear water, Brendel says murky water is where sharks hunt. Still, she says the predators are not man-eaters, as shown in this Chopper 8 footage of a shark choosing to attack a school of fish over nearby surfers. When they do attack people, Brendel says it's usually a test bite. The most recent shark attack was September of 08. Todd Murashige survived after being bitten while surfing off Oahu's windward side. That's why oftentimes people will end up just with a puncture wound. They let go saying this is not what I thought it would be. Uh, unfortunately, we're very fragile. To expose shark's true colors, Brendel is working with a production crew on a TV show. The idea behind the show is, is, is to feature um, sharks in a new light, um, uh, to get away from the whole shark hysteria. If sharks were really out to get humans, they could get a few every single day on every single beach. Mariella David, KHNL and K5 News. And Brendel hopes her TV show will strip sharks' bad reputation and build support to save them. The show is called Shark Boat. Right now, it's just a proposal. A network has not picked it up just yet. And here's video that thousands of viewers have logged on to KHNL.com to see again. And you can do the same. Chopper 8's video of a shark cruising close to surfers and then launching a full-blown attack on a school of fish. It's ready for you to watch right now on KHNL.com. 
Speaking of watching, we want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Our next newscast, KHNL News 8 Today, begins bright and early at 5 a.m. with Dash and Diane. You have a good night. Is your office...